about time to upgrade my main server again, which is an HP DL180G6. So up for the upgrades are RAM and storage, which is this whole box here. So first of all, RAM. So it has eight. So it has a total of twelve DIMM slots across two CPUs. So six DIMMs per CPU. It's dual thirteen sixty six, which supports DDR3. I'm running registered DDR3, and I have a bit of memory to use in it. I have these four sixteen gig sticks I want to use. I have four eight gig sticks and a ton of four gig sticks. And I'd preferably like to run all of them. And I think that gives me about one hundred and twelve gigs. I think that's about right. If I can't do that, I just won't run the fours and do that. I know some of it gets a bit picky. Some servers say like, oh, you can mix and match, but you can only have two different types. Normally, if it's all the same type, if it's all registered, it's kind of happy. Mixing and matching does hurt performance. The best case scenario would be to have, I think, best for performance is six dims of identical size and speed. But, you know, what? I'd rather have the extra space because I'm currently running pretty much at the max. Because I'm running a lot of VMs and I'm also running and using a lot of disk caching as well. So that'd be nice, and I'm hitting swap, so right now I'm using about 20 gigs of swap, which I don't want to be using. The next thing I want to do is add a JBOD enclosure, which is this big super micro guy here. And this essentially just lets me run more drives. It's basically a giant, super nice external hard drive. So it, there's a super micro 826 case, but there's nothing in the motherboard tray, it's just completely empty. And it just has SAS connectors that go to the SAS backplane. Um, I think this backplane will support pretty much it's SAS 2, I'm pretty sure. So it'll support any reasonable size drives you can buy these days. And um, it has standard super micro power supplies, like hot swap power supplies. I think these are like 750 watts, way overkill. And then on the front, you have 12 2, 3.5 inch hard drives. So in order to use this, it needs power. It also needs these SFF 80, 8647s, I think. Um, I don't remember the exact number. It's the external version. And you need an LSI SAS card. So this is a, I forget, I think it's based off the LSI SAS chipsets. It's basically an HBA. Let's me access them. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do on it drive-wise, but probably ZFS. And if I, I have a lot of 2 tails, so I wouldn't be surprised if I do like a big 2 tail RAID Z2 or something. But we'll see about doing that. Right now we're going to focus mostly on just putting this card in the system. I actually need to check that it works because these sometimes have issues over time. So we're just going to plug this on a test bench to make sure it works. And then we're going to put all this RAM in here and see what configuration we can get all the RAM to work in. So I have the system running now just plugged in with two hard drives plugged into one of my old desktops. And I have an old 80 gig drive in it which does perfectly appear in disk management. So it does work still after being unused for a while. So it's now time to get that card into the server and try setting up the RAM configs. So here I have my server HP DL180G6 in the rack with its top off. So it's sitting here and I have all my new RAM and then I have the system with all of its current RAM in there. It's kind of a pain to actually fully get it out of the rack so I'm not going to do that. So looking at the system now we can see ooh, look at all those pretty dims on each side of those. So the, those are all 4 gig dims. And well, the question with the correct layout is kind of a big, eh, I, I don't know. The, it's probably going to run in single channel no matter what with the weird dim layout. So we're just going to replace the outmost dims with the bigger ones and hope it works. Um, I know performance is going to be unoptimal, but yeah, at this point capacity for me matters a lot more than performance. So we got the sticks out and we're going to have two fours, two eights, and two sixteens for each CPU. And hopefully it'll boot. Well, I'm lucky. I just missed the message on video, but it did say 114 gigabytes seen, and it seems to be booting. We'll have to double check it once it gets in the OS, but now it's initializing all the RAID controllers. And now, uh, I realized I had another RAID controller on this card already. This is not it, it's the other one. But that one will do fine for doing just basic video, um, basic um, connecting the external SAS. And I also don't have an available PCI Express slot, so I'll have to deal. But in a second or two, we'll see if it actually boots into the OS, and hopefully it does, and we can close it all up and start adding the drive base. And I have the SFF8086 um, cable, I think, running from the server down to the um, SAS connection right here. And then I have it all plugged in, powered up, so I'll have to start testing that and make sure all the RAM and everything is fired up correctly, but it looks like the upgrade's complete. So I did a quick test of everything. So first of all, um, I tested to see if the new drive enclosure works, and I hot added a 80 gigabyte hard drive, and that works as expected. 
I've had a few weird issues with these drive bays, just not liking certain drives and only want to see 11 out of 12, but it's better than nothing. It says 110, the system says 114, I think if you add all the numbers up you get 112, but that's fine, we're using 63 of those gigs. Um, a lot of that's actually ZFS's ARC, which is reasonably good most of the time. And also if we look at the Proxmox GUI, we see available RAM. That's gone way up. And usage has gone up. The usage was really low. It was normally sitting something like this. So if I go over and say instead of the last hour, let's go over the last year actually, average of last year. Um, you can see it's varied slightly. So I think I started out with like 24 gigs, yeah, and then I went up to, I think I peaked at 67, that's odd, and then it's gone back up, and I've sat at 48 for quite a while. I guess I've only had the server since a little over, like, 10 months or something, but thanks for watching me upgrade my server. More videos probably on the server in the future. It's chugging, still chugging pretty well with dual 6-core 1366 CPUs. L5630s are still reasonably power efficient and fast, and realistically, like, that CPU usage is pretty low, but I haven't fired everything up on it just yet.